I am Mauricio Lizarazo. I am tour manager and um, live music producer. I uh, worked from the beginning, 2003, I started with the Salon de Baile, it's the Latin alternative um, floor uh, by the, at the Fusion Festival. And then over the years, I uh, wanted to do my my job as tour manager and producing uh, live music uh, in the most sustainable way possible. And that uh, that comes to in the last five, six years, I've been developing like a platform for sustainability in live music. And I think I see the future of live events of music uh, in that direction, of clubs in that direction. So, yeah, that's me. Uh, hello, I'm Stefan, Stefan Hengs. I'm from Berlin. Uh, I'm an event manager. Uh, I'm running uh, several kinds of events, conferences, trade shows, also uh, music festivals and concerts. And uh, I'm, yeah, before I did artist management for around 10 years uh, and now yeah, I grew into being an event manager, working for the Berlin Music Commission here in Berlin, for example, that's the uh, industry network of the music industry here in Berlin, but also working for tech conferences and things like that. I'm uh, also a spokesman of the uh, Fachgruppe der Veranstaltungswirtschaft in the Berlin Music Commission. I don't know what this is in English. It's like the like the event industry part of the Berlin Music Commission there. I'm like a spokesman and we do lobbyism also during the pandemic was quite important for us to talk to politicians and to somehow get a chance to survive during those two years. So that's what I'm doing. Hi, my name is Bo. I'm uh, from Hamburg. I'm the president of the German event association called Deutsche Eventverband. Um, so um, uh, we met, meet us in the pandemic, doing the the, the, the same the same things, um, fighting for for our uh, yeah, for for the event um, and and um, uh, the club industries. And um, so in real life, I'm owner of an. Uh, uh, technic and uh, PA rental service um, and doing this uh, for around 20 years now. Nice, nice to have you here, guys. And yeah, let's start with a really general question. So um, what do you think, how changed everything um, with the pandemic, like um, with the pandemic, like what in the event um, scene, club scene, um, what is the big change now and um like in the future what what will happen um in your like business for example <laughs> oh it, it it changed a lot i think but um i see that uh i don't know i was just on tour for the past three and a half uh, weeks with uh, lola march that we were touring in europe again we were doing the shows that we had before the pandemic and then I saw that there was like uh, an euphoric, you know, feeling of live shows and live music and everybody was like going to the shows like, like almost like uh, there was no pandemic, like everybody forgot about it. So my feeling was like we haven't learned anything from, you know, the, the this difficult situation because it was tough for our for our fields, whatever. But uh, personally, I felt like uh, we should really change how we how we behave, how we consume, how we produce events, how we go to music uh, shows. And it was like, you know, recovery. Let's do this again. Let's make some money. Make, let's, uh, you know, push the, the promotion. Let's uh, fill up the shows. Like uh, we had uh, from 18 shows, we had 15 sold out shows, no mask, you know. Although we had internally at the band and the production, we were always wearing the mask during setup and sound check and all that stuff, trying to be, you know, somehow, I don't know, taking care of, you know, some stuff and then together with all this stuff. So I don't know what's going to happen. I think the future is for me a little bit of, you know, the big question mark still, because I thought we were going to do things more conscious after the pandemic or whatever the pandemic is after. It's not, there's no after. We still have Corona. So do you think it's getting better in the future? I don't know. I am really, I know, I, I mean, I you hope, I hope, I, I, of course I have the hope, but I saw the shows that we were, okay, sold out shows and great vibes and everything. Yeah. And then we were making money and the merch was going like crazy. Everybody was like buying, like, there's no tomorrow. Like, yeah, let's, let's buy this, you know, like, and t-shirts and vinyls and all that stuff. So, and it was cool. But on the other side, I don't know uh, how long it's going to last that we are going to get another pandemic. 
you know, how, how long is going to, are we going to be able to do this? So I was like very thankful, like, okay, we make the most out of it, but uh, this is not sustainable. This is not, this is not, not heading really somewhere because in a couple of months, year or whatever, there's the next crisis or whatever. And we're living in a climate crisis. So what are we doing for that? So all the sustainability climate crisis is like the pandemic comes and then it's like the sustainability subject is voila, again, like the last on the list. And then the war with Ukraine, boom, again. So it's more important than now, like the, the pandemic. So I don't know. I don't know. Um, I think there have been uh, positive and negative outcomes um, from the pandemic for the live music or for the live event industry. Positive things are that I that a like internally the event industry has uh, much more grown together than before. Like all the different institutions, all the different companies, all the different people working in the music business. Some have maybe not been enemies before, but even the the big concept of festival promoters they got together, they stood together uh, because they were you know. They, no one had an idea at the beginning how to how to how to succeed, how to survive, how this will all you know which result, how this will all affect us, and so on. Will we do we have to get uh, bankrupt? Do we have to let our employees go or whatever? Will there ever be concert and, and under which circumstances and so on? So it all really came together. Where this is where we, for example, met and uh, many others also. So this is good. Um, another thing that's good is that I think that uh, events have been. Uh, are more professional nowadays because with all those rules that we had to apl apply which was at the beginning a bit chaotic and difficult okay how are we going to do this what do we have to do what, how are we going to do this and so on with all the reglementation and wayfinding and uh, do not cross each other and and uh, um vaccination check and whatever what all we had you know most of the things are not there anymore but at one point or after a certain point we uh, understood how to do it and we made it possible and we were able to run big shows big events big concerts big festivals even with all those rules so this is some uh, um, part of professionalization that will still stay in my opinion and negative obviously i mean production production costs uh, uh, are increasing or have increased terribly you know Sometimes double, sometimes multiple, more than double even, and uh, in certain ex uh, extincts, and which uh, definitely mean that ticket prices are rising. Though, and this would also be an, a question for me, actually, maybe also for you, for the public. Though, how how do you see, and all of you, like the uh, current development of ticket prices increasing uh, until when, or will there be a point where shows will not be sold out anymore? Or you, or all of you and us, will decide to not go through the concert, through the festival, to whatever party we actually want to go because it's just too expensive, you know, or not as often anymore or something like that. I think, and this is my big fear, that uh, culture and events will be a luxury good at one point for only for the people who are Maybe not rich, but you know, like having money. Some, you know, have enough money, and then for poor ones, uh, poor ones could be students, even you know, uh, who then cannot afford to attend a concert or theater or festival or whatever anymore. So this would be problematic. But what what do you think? Like, is this just the ticket price w uh, which is getting uh, like higher, or in general everything like drinks, food? Well, all the yeah. Well, at the moment, all the costs are increasing. You know, beer, for example, because of the war in the Ukraine. Uh, it's a problem with uh, um, uh, hope and weed and so on. So beer prices are rising. Also a problem, you know. But this is small amount. The most important factor still is, is the ticket price. Costs. Transport costs are rising. Everything. So the production costs behind the event are, are increasing. So that means at one point the ticket price has to has to rise. And that's the thing. Yeah. What 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 is your thinking about the what what changed for your from your side? I think. Um, for for the event business uh, generally, everything has changed. Mm -hmm. um, but it's okay. The the, the, the word is, is uh, I don't know. We saw in German the um, or the, the word just keeps on, on going and turning. So um, we live in a changing world. So it's okay. We we have to to um, see the changes and and go with them. Um, there, uh, the, the big problem I see is um, what what changed is that we don't have any more or we have less um, uh, crew um, for for the events and em em employees. The, no, there are no more freelancers. Um, the prices rise of the for the, the free, uh, freelancers. So and um, when we had events before the the, the pandemic, we 
had to see, do we have the equipment? Can we um, bring the stuff to, to the events? Now, our problem is, do we have the, the crew to do the event or make the events possible? That's, that's a big thing. And that is what, what scares me for the future. How can we do our, our jobs with no, uh, with no stuff? So what do you think? Like, does it make sense to create something new, like new events? Or um, you have to be uh, safe with your um, old stuff. So what do you think about it? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's really difficult. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very difficult thing. thing. Uh, what I see for me and my, my rental company, we have many, many, many more events than before the pandemic. Um, but we don't know how we can do it, how we can solve the problem. So um, yeah, I don't know what we can do, how we can do it. Um, even if you... you is, is the problem with, with staffing now, is it retention? Pardon? Is it, is it retention that's the problem? Or is it just kind of you know, bringing new staff through that you're, that you're struggling with? Um, both, I think. Okay. Yeah. So, if anybody, uh, anyone has has an idea how we can solve this problem, please tell me. <laughs> well, what, what are you doing then, though? You know, you got an uh, you got a request. Okay, can you equip my event here and there? And you can say, okay, I might have the equipment, but I don't have the staff. No, I can't do it. Yeah. Are you rejecting offers? Yeah, yeah. All right. And I then what do. do those people do? You know, those event organizers, yeah. do they find someone else or do you already know of events who got canceled just because you and people like you cannot support uh, support with uh, equipment and, and stuff anymore? Um, I think both, but I think most of them try to fix the problems with, with, um, with crew members without any um, experience. Mm. So, and the professionality... Um, Will, will, yeah, we will lose the professionality in, 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 this, in this business, I think. Oh. So, like, my, yeah. Yeah, I don't know, can we ask? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Feel free to ask. Um, yeah, I, am, uh, I work for a big festival company in the Netherlands, um, doing also international productions. And yeah, we obviously we have all, everyone has those issues, but we also see, not only in our company, but actually everywhere, that. Uh, On top of this, uh, ticket sales are really, really late. Uh -huh. So people, there's a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of offers because all the events from the pandemic are now being done. Like your tour, you know, everyone's still catching up. Mm -hmm. On top, everyone wants to do their new editions or new events. Then and then, yeah, in addition to that, people are just waiting for the very, very last moment to buy a ticket. So and all the suppliers want the money up front. So there's like a huge money gap of hey, I need the money for equipment for the staff but then no one has bought a ticket yet and the event organizer doesn't know am i going to get sold out am i ever going to get that money like one day before what if i don't get it does that only i don't know it's probably not only the netherlands but do you see that everywhere as well same here but how are you handling it you and your company how are you handling this issue um so we're trying to be as lean as possible so we I like a, yeah, not an emergency meeting, but a bit like with the whole company and said, okay, we need to try and slim down as many costs as possible and ideally not consumer facing. So nothing that the actual audience would notice so that you don't compromise in quality, but literally anything else. Like oh. have less people in the backstage instead of two, three options for food, just have one, uh, yeah, two options for food. And, you know, if you can, anything that you can like scrape down or like reuse, like just try to not be as cheap as possible, obviously, but like try to be as efficient with oh. the resources as you can. And yeah, we're a big company, so we can pay that out up front, and then we're just like hoping that the ticket sells well. Doesn't sound too like bad, though. Events, I, think. I don't know, I don't know what they're going to do. Doesn't sound too bad to be as efficient as possible, reuse things. Yeah. Yeah, that's not too bad, actually. No. It, it sounds sustainable yeah. that, that uh, we're up to recycling, upcycling, yeah. you know, and then it is actually uh, a matter of uh, the resources are scared right now, like, and we're noticed, noticing this. So that maybe will bring us to more sustainable solutions, you know, like upcycling, recycling, using the going better with the resources. You know, and that's that, that that starts from the planning when you start planning an event. So how much resources do you have available? And then from food, from energy, from, uh, you know, transportation, from all that. And maybe 
maybe that will help, you know, to make the, the, the industry, the event industry, the music industry a little bit more sustainable in, a, in some way by force mm. because we don't have the resources, not because we get conscious, unfortunately, but maybe that will be a way, mm. you know, interesting. You're saying that like um, um, you're selling tickets relatively late. You don't know if your shows will get sold out or how many tickets you will actually say. Though, question is, will the demand be stay high? Because in general, it's high. There are so many events at the same time, so it might be that the single event is not sold out. But in general, there's a high demand on events. My impression at mm -hmm. the moment, and will and people, as I said, are uh, are willing to pay higher ticket prices also. So will this stay or will this? Uh, drop at one point because if the demand will stay high then we may have this chaotic year this year yeah. maybe even the next one but then high demand high ticket prices will lead to more revenue solves all our problems and then we'll be stable after yeah. afterwards yeah maybe let's yeah, hope for that yeah. like, but what um like do you have to create more special than for your events or for a live tour to um, yeah, turn turn up the the um, ticket selling. So if you had more like um, a business thing or a special thing or a close part, like what do you think? I would say no. I think rather use a simple backdrop instead of an LED wall because you know there's no LED wall or no people who can uh, set it up or so. So I would rather say okay, keep it simple and and pull it through somehow. What do you think? You're the equipment supplier. Though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's so true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, it's true, okay. <laughs> um, now I just want like want to go to the um, club thing. Um, do you think that it do it makes sense to open new up new clubs or in cities like for example in Berlin or in um, Hamburg or like everywhere in the world. So is it, yeah, sustainable or um, like we have to go back to our old things and yeah, what do you think about club? I, I think it's a gentrification uh, question because we have experienced, at least in Berlin, we have like, uh, seen that um, a lot of clubs have closed because of, you know, there's investors buying blocks of, you know, buildings and stuff and then they try to buy the culture with it but unfortunately you you cannot buy the culture when you buy a piece of land or a piece of whatever and then it's a cultural gentrification it, it is it has to go with the gentrification you have to have that like a, from the city and a strategy to protect that culture that subculture that is happening so when when that is given I think we can start thinking maybe in open, open, uh, reopen a club that it was closed before the pandemic or during the pandemic. At the same time, there was a little, a little bit of money, you know, from the government to protect some clubs. They got money to, you know, you know, change the roofs or whatever, and then to maintain their cost, mm -hmm. you know, and then it has to be really with a, with a, just together with a strong politic of protecting culture. I think, and then because that th this club culture, it's really attached to you know the, you know the movements that are happening within a city, within a place, and that uh, that has to be protected. And as a business, I don't know if it's a business like wise solution right now or uh, thinking to start opening a club, you know when the resources are like so so tight. I don't know. I would say no. I mean, if I would have money to invest, I would not open a club, okay. my own. <laughs> What do you think? Like. Um, about the club thing? Well, uh, in terms of sustainability, rather do less. That's yeah. more sustainable in general, though. Uh, but um, I don't know. I've, me, I wouldn't open up a club at the moment, maybe. But then on the other hand, you know, there's always this constant development of uh, some clubs dying, some, club, some clubs opening up again, same with restaurants, gastronomy, whatever, you know, or other cultural places. So a uh, good thing is that in Berlin, not as, as far as I know, not a single club had to close because of the pandemic. I think there are two or three that I know that closed, but they would have clo uh, closed anyways because of other reasons. Uh, so not a single, because of public funding that we received here in Berlin. This was not the case in others. I just talked yesterday to someone from, uh, from the uh, Association for Electronic Music. They're based in London. And she said that it's around 20% of the clubs had to close in, huh? It's a third even, yeah, all right, okay, bad, yeah, not a single one in Berlin at least. 
Um, so, which is good, you know. Um, so there are many clubs, so pff, I don't know. At the moment it's chaotic, but in general, sure, open up clubs, you know, do party, do culture, do whatever is good and makes fun. You know? Yeah, I think, I think. It Sorry, I was going to say, it really depends on the country and its funding, right? I'm here in Germany also, um, electronic music generally is recognized as a culture, you know. Yeah. Go, for instance, to New York or the US, so much, so many promoters have finished uh, doing parties, doing, you know, closed down clubs, restaurants, everything. Like oh. New York, I don't, it's not 20%, uh -huh. it's much more. Oh, really? yeah. Yeah. So, and the gentrification part, I agree, that really makes yeah. a difference. Like, mm -hmm. look at, uh, for sure, you, you know, uh, you heard of Output, which was one of, it was like the panorama bar of uh, Bergheim of New York. Uh -huh. And uh, when it opened, it was like in a warehouse district. Like, no, it was almost dangerous to go there. It was so dope. Like, they, they could do whatever. And then a few years later, they got bought up because of Nike, a big hotel next door. Oh. Yeah. It's not that easy, easy in Berlin. Luckily, as Maurice said, there are in parts for part of the clubs, there are rescue plans, and then like the. Uh, the area or the, the, the city of Berlin try to help somehow their programs as well as just said, so it's, it's a bit better here, but... Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it depends also on the location. So what, what I love in Berlin, uh, Berlin has so many clubs spread it all over the, the, the whole city. Mm -hmm. um, you can go on any day of the week in any district of Berlin, you will find a club and, and have, an, have a great night. When you go to, to Hamburg, we have just one, I say, party district, the St. Pauli district. There are 95% of the clubs based there. And I think it's maybe impossible to get a permission to open a club in any other, dis other district because of um, the, the living homes and the, the, the noisy people on the, on the streets outside. And it's very, very difficult to get a permission there. So yeah, it depends on this on the city and on the on the, 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 the yeah the local government. It's important. Like clubs, it's it's a super important part for Berlin, for the city of Berlin in general, because clubs and culture is something is one of the most important USPs of Berlin, which is a big part of what makes people uh, makes Berlin nice. You know, the culture, the club scene, which is really special. I mean, you have clubs in Ibiza, you have clubs in London, and so on, but the ones in Berlin are special, affordable. But in general, it's still affordable, even though it gets uh, more expensive also here. And uh, politicians, everyone, they know this because this is why people are coming here, tourists, tourism. We have to get the tourism new here because after the pandemic, still too little tourists. Um, um, and, uh, and also for people to, to uh, wanting to live here, for all the other companies, for example, we have big ones like Salando, Siemens is now resettling here in Berlin and they all need staff. They all need employees, young people mainly. Um, and so Berlin has to be attractive for the people and clubs is, uh, club culture is a big part of what makes uh, Berlin attractive. So the city of Berlin is supporting this. Um, like last, the last two years, um, there were many like online streaming things and online, um, for example, concerts. Um, do you think it is still attractive for an, um, for an artist or they all going back to the stage and creating something like on, on the stage, uh, a world tour, for example, or a show. Um, what do you think about this online thing? But because it was so important the last two years. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, of course. Okay. <laughs> what, is, what is an event for you? Sitting with a beer and, a, um, uh, and chips in front of your TV and watching a concert? Or is it an event for you to be in the venue Feeling the vibes, smelling the sweat of the other peoples. Yeah, the second and, one. Yeah, of course. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but like, 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 but like, maybe the 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 people are getting tired for partying, for example. Like, there's. I hope no. Uh, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know, like, because like they invest so much money um, in some uh, some online streaming um, things. Um, but what will happen with this? So ah, life is life is life is life. Yeah, for like for me, I'm a so big fan of live <laughs> events. So, but yeah, that's what, like a simple question because it was so important the last two years for everybody of us. Yeah, I think it, it was a good way to to be on the mind in the mind of the of the um, uh, of of the the, the, the fan bases. Yeah, uh, but it's um, at the end we all have to go 
back in the live business and that's that's what we do that's what um the yeah that is the event business it's a real life uh, business and no no streaming business this is um a hybrid is maybe a way to get an event or make event possible for people that can't go there and to, to reach more people on, on, on different places mm. but the the event it has to be live it's not that's a zero-sum game though is it the pardon it's not a zero-sum game though do you think because the, the reality is is that we all are here because of the live scene but the, the, the reality is is that like with gaming vr all yeah yeah people want different parts of mm -hmm. a, an experience so whether it's in rea reality or whether it's in the virtual world, I think it, it's a huge part of the technological, technological advancement in music, like with Twitch. Yeah, of course. Twitch yeah. has exploded in the pandemic. Yeah. It's here to stay. Oh. So you either embrace it and it will elevate your career further or you choose to disregard it, but you're missing out on a huge potential new audience there. So it doesn't have to be one thing or another. It can be a hybridization of, of both things, do you think? Yeah, I think um, it is a way to make it possible. But at the end, I, I personally need the, the, the live feeling. Mm -hmm. So in a VR um, system can't do the, um, an event for me real. Even if we have smelling system in the VR yeah. <laughs> board. <laughs> Smell must be must, 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 very important for you. Though. <laughs> You have a hybrid event like live and <coughs> also on the internet, like you are taking value from it, from the experience because it's something that will be accessible to everyone. Like the sets of the DJs and the old performance. I think it's the same though. I think, um, well, for me also only live is live. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that goes for the majority of people who are able to attend live events, you know. Uh, but uh, it, I think the whole live streaming things and performances in VR and so on, I think this will stay. It will be relatively niche, but it will stay and it will grow. Um, the, the services, the server, the tech and behind it and the services have gotten much more professional, you know. I just talked to uh, Nexa yesterday, people who do live performances in VR and so on, uh, relatively good, relatively professional. They did it for some bigger artists also. See, um, 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 just think of Tomorrowland, for example. Yeah. Tomorrowland yes, yeah. this year, 600,000 people sold out, completely tax sold out, and then I don't know. Uh, millions of others who can additionally watch it in VR. Also Coachella, they just did a not VR, but a, a simple, well, professional, but live stream, millions of views, you know? So there is a demand for this. Um, it's professional, you can earn money with it. You know, you can just extend your reach with it, but you can also have a paywall and say, okay, give me, I don't know, a 10 or 20 bucks or whatever, and then you can have the whole festival feeding at home. Whatever, and you know. and young younger people can also attend the, um, the attend the concerts. Like tra I, yeah. I I don't know if you uh, like I think last year the this big Travis Scott concert um, um, on In Fortnite, Fortnite yeah. and it was like yeah. huge. So there will be more and more. Yeah. yeah. I think promoters can use it as an additional revenue stream. Yeah. Right. So so why would they want right. to grow? Plus Definitely younger yeah. people who are appeal like who are appealing to a computer to be on a computer all the yeah. time, anyways. You know, yeah. who are gaming who are on, I don't know, Discord and whatever, whatever, on Twitch, you know, for them, it's easy to, it's because it's part of their daily life anyways, to be in front of a computer and not only for work as I am, yeah. but also uh, in private life. Yeah, I mean, there are some um, TikTok events also, so like, like watching to, um, the event on the smartphone, for me, it's super weird, but it works, <laughs> it works, it works. <laughs> and um, I, I work for Dance TV. Yeah. So, uh, basically are the videos that are that have to be a certain quality also we don't stream you know everything we're also streaming uh, this conference actually so yeah i know we're happy to be a part of it uh, but i think that, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that it really gives um a different like not everybody can attend yeah we are here look how few we are yeah, yeah. Yeah. And okay, this one is not streamed, but the ones from the auditorium will be. Yeah. And maybe this is interesting to people that cannot be in Berlin. Sure. The same with live concerts. I agree, if I can go to see Roy Dean Murphy live, I'll go see her live, you know? Yeah. A fantastic artist. I really recommend the concert if anybody can sure. <laughs> attend. Um, but if I can't, I, I'll be happy to watch it 
Yes, yes of course. Of course. Yeah. I think we all misrepresent the fact that as well, we're coming out of a pandemic and there's still a lot of people that are still wary about being in large groups with large mm. audiences. Mm. So that virtual world is a safe space for those types of people. Yeah, true. Yeah. So I think it's a really, really huge Definitely. market that yeah. I think is on the rest of it. And it will only continue to grow. And right, rightly so, because the, the reality is, is that if you look at the Chinese market, the Japanese market, those types of people that within their culture, they don't often go out to raise with thousands and thousands of people. Uh -huh. They actually prefer to sit at home and to engage virtually. So I think, you know, don't disregard certain communities because of the way they naturally function, is what I would say. Uh -huh. And also the fact that everything's getting more expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. With the ticket totally. prices yeah. and the drinks and everything. And sure. and all. I'm running a music business conference here in Berlin. Moritz, you know it. It's called Most Wanted Music. It's going on in November. That's the uh, commercial break up here. Uh, 8th to 10th of November. You should all come. It's uh, <laughs> Google, right? And we have uh, like... Check it out. Because of the... <laughs> Because of the pandemic, we opened up to be hybrid, you know. Um, first year, we had the hope that we can have at least a little amount of people, less because of capacity limitations. But then we were faced by the lockdown, I think it was four days before the event. So we had we did a physical stage production with conference and concerts, but no actual guests on site. And then the second year was for the first time actually hybrid. So stage production, live production and real people. Uh, and this worked. So And we had last year, we had just over 3,000 attendees international and about half of it were online attendees so over only uh, like yeah, 1500 on site a little bit more than 1500 online so this will i think change a little bit i think the ratio will more go uh, towards on-site attendance again but still it will stay and it's easier for people who are not in berlin for example who are international to to attend the conference and this also means also for the on-site attendees this has a benefit because the more people attend the conference it's a b2b event business event why are you going to business events you want to learn something and you want to meet other people, leads, it's all about leads, you know. Um, so, and the more people are, there are, even not if they're not in the room, but on the platform, and you can see in the delegate database all the profiles and professional background and connect them and uh, um, um, reach out to them directly and so on, the more, the better for everyone in the end. So, yeah. And as you, as an artist, like in the live music scene, what do you think about this online? No, I, I, uh, I think that you cannot replace the live music. Yeah. You cannot replace this, the sensations, the experience, the whole, you know, um, event is like, uh, I mean, uh, I think it's an addition. I think definitely this online stuff, this PR, it, it, if it's supported with, a, you know, extreme technology that gives you, you know, like a great uh, sensation and experience. I mean, you can do it, but it's hard to replace the live uh, experience that you, you get because, uh, I don't know. There's a you have to take the different you know um, considerations on it, and I mean, but uh, at the end we we are we need to socialize. You know the whole thing with Corona we isolated, mm -hmm. and then were people really suffering from that? On top of all, all the other things that we had yeah. in the past, you know, depressions and burnouts and whatever, and then uh, we need to socialize. And I think, as I see it all the time, this live music, this festival, coming to a festival, and then exchanging and all that is is really a release you know it's really a a moment where you can can feel human somehow you know mm -hmm. and i think there's no nothing like that and i have to say virtual events be it live streams or vr whatever is not very sustainable that's true yeah, of course. the servers and all that stuff i mean you have to think about that too where are your are, are your you know like technology support located are, are they running on renewable energy that's the first question if not then do it no worry um, but the the the, the streaming um, uh, add-on, yeah. So it can be just an add-on. Can be the right tool to make the the ticket prices cheaper, mm -hmm. so that the organizers can earn uh, mm -hmm. from 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 the the, the um, streaming um, uh, viewers some some money to save money in the in the, in the live event. Mm -hmm. But the the um, the artist, I think, an artist needs the crowd in front of the stage to get a response. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we are almost done with our panel here and it's your turn now. If you have questions, feel free to ask them. And I think at one, there's another panel in the auditorium. So if you have questions, feel free. If not, the guys are stay here for a while, I think. Yeah. yeah, and then you can connect and everything. <laughs> so, 
Perfect. Yeah. Just, yeah. I don't know if it's really a question or a thought, or what we just talked about with, yeah, like hybrid formats and so on. Because I yesterday I was speaking to a friend of mine who was uh, went back to uni, so she's like yeah, like thirty and with all these eighteen year olds and stuff. And uh, she was saying yeah, like they don't go out a lot, so it's good for my study. But when I was eighteen, I was going out much more and so on. Oh. And she's like yeah, at the moment I don't like I don't really feel like going to parties much anyway. And I was like yeah, I'm, I'm parties all the time. So <laughs> 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 so that's also kind of my, you know, like my job. Um, but then it's yeah, like a lot of I think also I grew up. Thinking, okay, once you're like kind of like once you hit 30, you know, you're you're going to stop going out. Like, you don't go to parties anymore. I'm almost 40, I'm still partying. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think, like, I have, we have like some party groups and stuff, like, you know, like some small collectors where you have people that are 65 or like 50 or something who still go out to raise yeah. and to be there. So, like, that whole, I think that's like a big myth that, you know, yeah. I find, like, at least for me, is like completely debunked. At the same time, there are a lot of people that kind of think for themselves or that just don't really feel like, you know, they don't want the hangover anymore or they don't want the, yeah, like, you know, the, the whole, like, getting tired and having everyone sweat on you and, like, having to push to the bar and the queue and stuff. Like, they're just kind of getting tired of it or they could kind of babysit it. And I think those people are kind of, you know, they're out of that whole clubbing scene, but at the same time, maybe, the, like, offering them a virtual or an online way would be an option to kind of reactivate them. So technically, if you just look at Ravers, if everyone wants to be liked, they're always going to go to like them. But the people that used to like it and now say, oh, I don't know, you know, should I really go as well as the house? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Like maybe that's a good way. That's like a whole bunch of people mm -hmm. who are not going clubbing. That maybe that's a really good way to kind of Lost get them right. back in. And yeah, I mean, that's like a very commercial way of thinking <laughs> <laughs> and rave and parties and whatever if I feel like it. But um, sometimes I can't because I'm not in the right country or yeah. it's too far or for some reason uh, the tickets are sold out. I can just guess this. I don't know, you know. And then if there is this option, why not? Yeah, yeah. yeah totally. Why not? I think it's a huge revenue stream that you know promoters and, and artists alike can jump all over because it's a brand new audience that nobody's oh. ever truly tapped into. Oh. And then the pandemic has forced people to really re-examine, you know, what 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 experience might mean to individuals. Oh. Some people want the more real life experience, while some are quite happy to live in a virtual world. Oh. And it's not a zero sum game we can all share. Yeah, yeah. World, really. oh. It's not one or the other though. I mean it's it's getting more diverse in live music, but also think of NFTs, you know? A new thing for revenue streams, for being creative, for new technology and so on, not really there yet because not like usable in daily life, but it's there and it's another type of diversica diversification of what artists, musicians and others can do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I, I think we're talking about a problem that's not existing. <laughs> because because when we see other businesses they doing this like I don't know, fifty years, sixty years. Um Yesterday, everybody was watching football and the TV. It was totally normal to watch the, the football um, match on TV exactly. and not, not in the either. stadium. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Good comparison. Yeah. And, and that audience will grow. Yeah. Yeah. Let's be honest. I mean, festivals this year are set to massively jump compared to 2019 in terms of the number of festivals globally. But yet, they're, they're selling out a lot faster than ever before. So the reality is, is there's, there's still people on guest lists, on waiting lists for tickets for a festival. Greenfields is one in the UK. There, there, there's 20 or 1,000 people on the, on the waiting list now for oh. tickets for Greenfields. Oh. Oh. And that's 130, 140,000 people that have got their tickets already. So there's a huge audience that, that will have to sit at home consume it. Mm -hmm. you know, and I think artists and, and management teams alike should really jump all over it because it would be, you'd be poor not to really. Mm -hmm. I like your comparison, though. <laughs> with, 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 with football, uh, does yeah, that mean it's, there might be billions in it, you know, to sort of stream and to sell it to TV stations and everything now? Yeah. Ooh, right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah perfect. So, so problem solved. <laughs> if you don't have like questions, then we are done with this panel. Yeah. yeah. I know I missed the whole thing. <laughs>
<laughs> what did you to say before? <laughs> No, and let's not do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, horrible. it's horrible. It's horrible. It's horrible. It's an issue that has to be solved if there's enough revenue and there's enough money to pay for the licenses and so on. But someone has to take care. It's complicated. Yeah, I think. It, it's, yeah, I think it's. I think it's a big problem. So we had we had some some DJ streaming events, and they paid for the GEMA, um, but Facebook and YouTube cut the streams because they don't know about the, the oh, GEMA payment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think in general, GEMA has to update their business model. Their model mm -hmm. is really old school stuff that. Uh, I mean, you cannot explain it to new artists. The old artists, I mean, I, I paid Gamma first time in 2003 for my band, and I remember it was like, okay, this is how it rolls, but now you explain it to new artists mm -hmm. that are that have all these you know, online revenue opportunities, and then they say, why do I have to pay for that? Because I'm paying for the internet already, or whatever, mm -hmm. it's like, it's, it's there. So Gamma is really obsolete. It's, they have to update completely. I mean, they have to get rid of all the, their management and get new people. In there, I don't know, really. It's and and, and, no. and talk to them about it. I don't know how to do it, but it's not like worldwide solution. There are some uh, companies that work with working on it, like uh, DJ Wattenberg, for instance. So that's a crew that's working on, on trying to propose a solution for. Yeah, that's, that's where I work. Okay. Oh. <laughs> 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 Perfect. Enough for another two panels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but don't forget, but so like, important is if you do a live stream gig of whatever, you know, think about the license. Do you have the rights to do it or will there be, might there be any problems? Yeah, maybe next year we're going to create a big, bigger panel for this. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's a very interesting subject. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Perfect. So, yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so perfect. No question left then. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.